Okay, hello again and welcome to part two of the Q&A. The first part you can see uh, on Facebook or our YouTube channel. So we're gonna keep going with more questions. We have got a couple of questions about our new Ellipse Profile series. First question is, what is your new Ellipse Profile about? The second question is, what is the main difference between the three ellipse profiles? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that the, the new ellipse profile is, if you compare it to, to um, quad, for example, you have four different radii in different sizes on the same blade. But this one, we have squeezed in one radius, we have squeezed it, and then you can move it where you want to have it on the on the profile which means that you can get the same feeling as a as a multi profile with a shorter radius in front and and longer in the middle and so on backwards but it gets seamless transition on the whole blade i would say and um, you can't measure the radius out of it so it's a lip elliptic form of, of the shape on the profile and uh, I would say the, the difference between them is the sizes of the circle and how much you have squeezed it together yeah you can still manipulate the same same uh, steel to ice contact same as we talked about over the superior and quad series your acceleration agility your speed and stability segments but with uh, with ellipse it's a really really seamless uh, switch on one part of a plate to another one so have you guys tried try them out yeah yeah what were your personal thoughts about them? Uh, I, I felt like instantly when you go on the ice I felt that uh, I was skating on something different it wasn't like my previous preference on, on, on profiles were quad too. I really loved them and then when I when I first tried the, uh, the ellipse series I didn't feel all that uh, that I was on a different planet. It was just like it's it's almost hard to explain how how you're uh, I almost feel like my muscles my leg muscles are loaded all the time. Whatever I want to do with the skates I'm on top of top of the steel. I'm, I'm ready to move the direction. I'm ready to turn really quick. I'm ready to take my uh, the hardest strikes and also I would say that when when you're skating forward and you're pushing on the side with your legs it's really forgiving profile but when you're kicking with your uh, in a skating stride it really forgives even if it's not the exact the, the right kind of um, push I still feel the power uh, from my legs to the uh, translate to the eyes yeah I, I felt the same and and one thing as well that that I felt was that I get more power out of the, the crossovers and the turns so it gives you like like a more powerful turn yeah and and I haven't really felt that the same way on, on the other ones and I was skating on superior medium before sure and um, so I like the lips too best because that's the longest one if you compare them and um, it felt like I was uh, uh, better skater yeah with these uh, and I don't know if this is funny but I, I felt when I went on the ice and then like after skating a little while I felt like uh, I drive the manual shift car but every once in a while I get a rental car that is uh, automatic and I, I felt almost like that that like switch over the gears was so smooth it just went with these uh, Elvis profiles yeah have you tried them Yes, I tried them as well, and uh, my, my first uh, first feeling was if I still played, I would have changed right away for the game at the evening. Mm -hmm. I, I personally liked the Lips 1 the most. Uh, I thought that 2 was a little long for me, uh, but uh, like you said, Mikko, it's, it, it was so smooth. I felt good contact whatever I did on the ice uh, quick turns uh, full strides uh, I, I felt power when I skated and, and 
total control of the of the blades yeah. and uh, so so I uh, I was a big fan of, of the new the lift. It's almost like extension of your feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next question. It's uh, about a Bauer skate and my Bauer skate have a CL and PPL lines on the blades. What do they mean? Yeah, <clears throat> basically you have a CL is the centrum line and then you have a PP it's 20 millimeter backwards it stands for pivot point. And what does does a pivot point mean? That's that's the lowest point on on, on the blade. Okay, moving on. My skates were reprofiled in a local shop and they felt different to what they were after the first profiling. I wonder if it's just me or could there be something that went wrong in the reprofiling process? Mm -hmm. when, when steel gets reprofiled, if you have a, one of our pitch profile superior quad, you need to offset the center point. That's what Nicholas was talking about, the pivot point, the center line and the pivot point. And um, I believe we have a few videos about it on the YouTube, how to set up these uh, steps. So that's really important step for the stores to um, take into account that when you're reprofiling pitch profiles, you need to understand the center line and pivot point and the meaning of those uh, yeah. markings. And based on the holder size too. Yeah, exactly. And, and what you need to do is is to get uh, uh, as natural lean on the blade as possible when you put it in the machine. That's why you do it. And like Miko said, uh, there's uh, great videos on ProSharp World on YouTube where you can follow the reprofiling process. Exactly. Another thing too that comes to my mind now is if the skates feel different. So does the the profile actually feel different or do they just feel different so the radius of uh, hollow is the one element to how how they're sharper are they deeper or flatter yeah okay let's we're moving on to the next question how do i know i'm skating with the right hollow depth yeah uh, the recommendation is that you take your weight divided with 3.14 p and that's the recommendation of what's radius of hollow, what you should try. And as well that if that feels good, you can go for an even more shallower hollow until your skates feel dull. And then you just go for a little deeper than that. Because what we want to aim for is that we want to go for a more shallower hollow to get the glide. But you still have the grip. Okay. So that's the recommendation. But... If you're having a small kid, uh, if the recommendation is going below 15, the recommendation is to not go under 15. So, for example, a small kids, uh, the recommendation could be 8, 9, 10 millimeter. And then we recommend you that you don't go below 15 millimeter in hollow. Yeah, that's a really good reference point. If you go to competitive players, it, um, there's a, so much comes into the play what they feel and what they what they want to have out of the skates if you want to have more bite then by all means then you just need to have a sharper but these uh, um, uh, measurements weight divided by 3.14 is, uh, is good indication where you should start or if you look in some other um, advances out of your skates or want to have more uh, glide for example you want to make sure that your hollow is uh, shallow enough okay so if I coach or is equipment manager for a uh, team with 10 year olds what what would your recommendation be for the hollow uh, it really if we're gonna do the same sharpening for all those yeah 10 year olds it's a um, the culture comes into the play too in northern Europe generally the hollows are flatter so Finland Sweden probably somewhere between 25 and 30 is pretty common. But if you go to North America, we're gonna be looking much, much deeper hollows. And that's just the, uh, how they used to, used to have them uh, sharpened. 
So in here, I would like my recommendation is probably start from 25 and see if you gotta go uh, more flatter, 27 or uh, 30. We're moving on. How often should I profile my skates? Yeah, our recommendation is that you do it uh, like the start of the season if you have a new skate, for example, and then after Christmas you're checking them again, and that's for for a regular player. But if you're going on a higher level, you're maybe having like four pairs of blades that you're switching to. Then you're starting to do it in the beginning, maybe after Christmas as well, and maybe before playoff, just to be sure that you're skating on on your profile that you want. Exactly, and it's good to have a second set of steels, regardless you're like if you're any kind of competitive player, that you always have that one backup pair that you can go to if you lose an edge in a game and you can't sharpen them uh, during the game. If we talk to uh, talk about uh, kids, then uh, mm. we go back to the ten-year-olds. Yeah. How how often should a parent profile the kids' skates? Um, you need to remember that you always profile the steels in a store or skates in a store, regardless what they have. And if if you feel like you don't need a profiling, you're gonna need a pro. Like they all steels have a profile. There's just laser cut. And it might be really in, in, inconsistent between uh, left and right skate. So even if it's a single radius profile, they need to be um, touched up that they actually have this profile. But my recommendation for the question is that you profile the pair and you skate with them. I think the one one time a season is probably sufficient for the 10 year old. Okay, now we move to uh, another type of question. It's more about the machines. How does the diamond tool change the actual radius of hollow on the AS machines? I would say when you have, if this is the diamond dresser, uh, when you have it on the highest point, you have flat. The diamond is moving in a uh, radius of five millimeter back and forth. So the diamond will move in the same direction all the time. When, when the diamond is in the highest point, you have flat. But if you're moving the diamond down here, by moving the sledge, obviously, you still have the same radius of 5 mm on, on the movement of, of the diamond. So you will have the same on the sides, but the diamond will go longer away from the wheel, and that will cause a higher top of the wheel, and that will cause, the, cause a deeper hollow when you sharpen the skates. Moving on, still uh, we're still on the machines. So, why does the scale knob need to be set at three millimeters on the holder models of the AS two thousand one machines? So that's how the the machine is being calibrated. When every time that you dress the wheel, taking that the machine is in calibration, you always dress it on three point zero, and then. By moving the sledge, you can adjust with your plate thickness uh, with the with the dial that moves the uh, position of the wheel sideways. Sideways, yes. Yeah. So that's basically, as Miko said, you dress it on three point zero, so you know when you have measured the thickness of the blade, how much you're gonna move, and to be sure that it's centered. Okay. Just to be clear, this is on the older. Older version of the AS two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, and one thousand one. And one thousand one. Okay, thanks. Moving on. Does the scale knob move the grinding wheel? Yes, it does. It moves it sideways to make sure that you get the highest point on the wheel centered on the blade. That's why we have it. 